WPX is a fantastic web hosting service. It's the one that we use and recommend. So this is lesson four of how to build a business website in a weekend. And we are going to go through signing up for WPX and installing WordPress step-by-step. Step. Let's dive in. Okay, so here we are on the WPX homepage. I'll go ahead and click start now. And now you can see that they have different prices for paying monthly versus paying yearly. You will get a bit of a discount if you pay yearly. If you pay monthly, it's just a few dollars more. So I'm gonna go with yearly and then I'll click get started. Then you'll need to choose a host location. You should choose a location that is closest to where you live. So since I'm in the United States, I'll choose host in the US. So now you have two choices. You can sign up for hosting only, or if you need a domain and hosting, you can select that option. I'll go ahead with the domain and hosting option because I think that is the easiest way to get up and running quickly, but, but as we have discussed before, there are some benefits to purchasing your domain from a domain registrar that is separate from your web host. So now I'll just enter in the domain that I want to buy. Be sure to choose the right extension and then click continue. So the domain that I want to purchase is available. So I can choose a billing period. I'm just gonna do one year and this is specifically for the domain and I'll click order now. So let's scroll down here a little bit. Under name servers, I do want the domain to use the WPX name servers. And then I'll just click continue. Then you'll just need to confirm your billing cycle and then click continue again. Then at the top of the page, you'll see an order summary. So just make sure all of that is correct. Underneath that, you can choose your payment method and then you can put in your information. When you're finished putting in your information, make sure that you've clicked the two check boxes here for the terms of service, privacy policy, and the refund policy. Then click the checkout button. And then you'll be presented with a WPX hosting GDPR policy. So simply scroll down to the bottom here and then click accept. And then click the checkout button. So I've been taken back to the pricing page, but I haven't actually put in my payment information yet. So I'll need to go to my services. And then it says I have an unpaid invoice. So I'll go ahead and see all invoices. And then I'll click view to view that invoice. And now I can pay the invoice. I'll be using PayPal, so I'll simply click the PayPal button. So that will take me to the PayPal login screen. I'll go ahead and log into PayPal. And since I already have my credit card set up with PayPal, I can simply click the pay now button. And here's my payment information. Let's hop back on over to WPX. All right, so I have reloaded the My Services page. And as you can see, I have two services here. I've got WordPress hosting and I've got domains. So now under WordPress hosting, I'll go to manage service. When you get to the service details page, then you'll need to go to manage websites and then simply click install WP. Now, if you would like to install multiple instances of WordPress on your domain name, then you may want to install WordPress in a subdirectory. But for now, we're going to keep things simple, so we'll just install WordPress on your website. Next, you'll need to fill in some information here. As for the database, you can leave that as it is. If your email is okay, you can leave that as it is. And then for admin username, be sure to put in something other than admin, because if you use admin, it makes it easier for people to hack into your site. For the password, I'll click generate password, and that way it'll generate something that is really secure. And then I'll click deploy WordPress. All right, so WordPress has been successfully installed. Be sure to take note of your admin username and your admin password. After WordPress has been installed, you'll get a confirmation email, and it'll also contain your login link. And that's always going to be your domain name slash wp-login.php. So I'll go ahead and click that link. 
Now I'll fill in the username and password that I set up just a moment ago. Then I'll click the login button. And here we are, we've got a fresh new WordPress installation. Now, if you want to use a domain registrar separate from your web host, you'll need to do an extra step of pointing your name servers to your web host. Now, I know that might sound slightly intimidating if you've never done it before, but it's actually quite simple to do. So to show you how to do this, I'll add a second domain to my WPX account, and I'll demonstrate using that as an example. So I've gone ahead and I've added a second domain to my WPX account, and I have already installed WordPress. What I need to do now is go into my domain registrar and I need to point the name servers to WPX. So I'll go to service details and the information I'll need is name server one and name server two. I'll go ahead and copy the information for name server one. And now let's head to my domain registrar. So right now I'm using name silo and I've gone ahead and I've opened the settings for my specific domain name and I need to look for the name server settings. The settings page is going to look slightly different depending on your chosen domain registrar, but what you're looking for is always going to be called name servers. So I'll go ahead and click the change button. And under name server one, I can simply paste in the information I just copied. And then I can hop back over to WPX to get the information for name server two. I'll go ahead and copy that and I'll head back to my domain registrar. I'll paste in the info for name server two. Let's get rid of this space. I can simply delete the information for name server three and then I'll click submit. And that's all there is to it. It does take some time for your name server information to update. So to be safe, they may tell you it'll take up to 24 hours, but typically I found that it takes about five minutes to about an hour. And so how do you know everything is working? Well, you'll be able to log in to your WordPress website. If your name server information has not yet propagated, you'll get some kind of error when you try to log in. So just wait a while. And if you have any trouble logging in after 24 hours, then contact your web host. Next, let's set up an SSL certificate so that your website will use the HTTPS protocol. So you may have noticed that the beginning of every URL is either HTTP or HTTPS. That added S at the end means that the website uses a secure connection. This is really important in particular when you're transmitting information such as credit card information over the internet. So in the past, it was mainly e-commerce sites that had to worry about HTTPS, but these days Google is really pushing everyone to use HTTPS, not just e-commerce websites. So let's get you set up with HTTPS. The first thing you'll have to do is install something called an SSL certificate. WPX offers free SSL certificates and they make it really easy to install. So in WPX, I've gone to manage websites. And so you'll notice for my domain here that there is a little lock icon. That means that SSL has been enabled for this website, but I'll also need to install an SSL certificate. So I'll go to SSL and I'll go to install free certificate. Now this is just a little note clarifying that you do want to install a free Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. And there is also a reminder that you need to point your name servers to WPX. So we've already done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click install. And I'll go ahead and overwrite the existing SSL certificate. All right, so it says that an SSL certificate was installed. Perfect. And now I'll just log in to my WordPress installation. After you log in, just go to settings and general. And then under WordPress address, you'll change this to HTTPS and under site address, change that also to HTTPS. Don't forget to scroll down to the bottom and click save changes. Now, after you click the save changes button, you'll probably be brought to your login page again. And that is because you have to re-log in now that your protocol is HTTPS. And now in your URL bar, you should see a little lock icon and your domain name should begin with HTTPS. So now your web hosting is all set up, WordPress is ready to go, and now you are ready to begin building. Let's move on to the next lesson.